Jerry, one of the girls in the video said she grew up shooting guns. Was that how it was for you in Texas? Well, we used to have, you know, not quite such sophisticated guns, but we had shotguns, and we used to practice shooting at tin cans. And um, there was a lot of raccoon hunting that went on. It's a cute little animal, right? Yeah, raccoons are the only animals with bones in their penises. And at, at home, the guys would polish them up, and they had a little hook on the end, and they'd drill a hole, and put, you'd wear it on a necklace. So a, a sign of popularity for a girl was how many coons pricks she had. <laughs> and how many did you have, Jerry? really sad I didn't have any, so I left home so early. But my sister Cindy had three. All right. The girl I knew once said that I had a raccoon's penis. I think she meant something else, though. Okay. <laughs> well, it has a hook on the end. <laughs> I didn't know about the hook. <laughs> well, tell me what you were like as a teenager. I mean, you didn't have a ra raccoon's penis necklace, but you had, uh, you know, you did all the other, th other th things that young uh, Texas teenagers did. What would be, this was before you rebuilt, so what was it like? Well, we used to go to the rodeo a lot, because the biggest thing in our town was the rodeo. And um, we used to ride our horses to the rodeo, and, uh, you know, we were bull rider groupies. So I was very prepared for being a rock and roll groupie. We used to hang around the stalls and watch the bull riders mount up and things. It was all very exciting. <laughs> I don't know how to say this, but I did read that you were discovered in a toilet in the Riviera. Well, yes, my mother said to me, go to the Riviera, because she'd seen all those movies, and, you know, she said, that's definitely the place to go. So she'd made me all these wonderful outfits, sort of copies of Fredericks of Hollywood, and, um, you know, all these sort of snakeskin things with my legs all showing. And uh, I went down there, and I was wearing a... I was on the beach, and I was, I think I was noticed because I was the only girl wearing a top. You know, they were all oh. topless. And um, a man sort of gave me his phone number. He followed me to the bathroom, stuck his phone number in my bikini bottom and said, would you like to be a model? So I said, yeah. <laughs> so I started modeling. And he was genuine. Mm -hmm. yeah. He really was, yeah. I, I imagine there quite I was a lot of guys. Lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I imagine a lot of guys running around putting those cards out, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> So you, uh, so you arrive in Paris, and, uh, and then what happened? I started modeling yeah. with uh, Helmut Newton, you know. yeah. I, I was uh, sharing a flat with Grace Jones. She was the, uh, she was wild. Yeah, that was before she was well known. And um, we had a lot of friends who were, you know, transvestites and things. And so we used to spend hours sticking glitter on our face and sticking feathers on our forehead and dancing on tables. And Helmut Newton sort We of got noticed. I'll bet, yeah. <laughs> Helmut Newton does a lot of... Uh, wasn't he sort of keen on dressing you up in leather and stuff? Well, like? yeah, he was the first uh, photographer I worked with. And um, we'd done all these pictures where, you know, I was wearing all these leather clothes and whips and chains. And um, I started crying after a day of this, you know, and I said, well, I think this is pornography. And he said, no, this is art. But, um, you know, next job, I promise, will be fashion, if that's what you want to do. And sure enough, we did the cover of French Vogue. And, um, you know, shortly after that, we did quite a lot of things. So I, I was very lucky. I got discovered, you know. And then you just meet everyone in Paris, wouldn't you? What kind of people did you hang out with? Well, I met a lot of exciting people. Um, Salvador Dali. Oh, really? King yeah. Vidor and um, Jean-Paul Sartre and oh. Simone de Beauvoir. Uh -huh. And, um, yes, we discussed existentialism at the La Coupole. Uh -huh. and he would, and, and Jean... <laughs> they couldn't believe I'd heard about it in Texas. Well, you, you're absolutely sure that Jean-Paul Sartre's interest in you was entirely <laughs> philosophical when he leaned forward and, and started explaining existentialism? Did you think? Yeah? What did you think? Well, I think he was amazed that you know, someone from a very small town had heard about it. All right. And Simone de Beauvoir wasn't no, a bit jealous. They loved hearing stories about the rodeo and things. Uh, there, there are thousands and thousands of hopefuls starting off in your business in Paris then and since, hundreds of thousands. What have you, this just sounds like a crazy question because I'm looking right at what you've got that the others haven't, but what have you got that the others haven't? <laughs> well, um, I, I did do a lot of research, you know, when I was first in Paris. Um, I um, shared a flat with some, uh, some fashion illustrators, Antonio Lopez and some different people, and they had a lot of research books on fashion. 
and photography. And so I, I would, you know, look in a full-length mirror and copy all the poses that Marlene Dietrich did and everything. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's very difficult, you know, when you're in a business where you know, the height of professionalism is considered to be not blinking, you know. <laughs> yeah. But, <laughs> I could... Is it hard? Uh, well, not blinking, yeah, it's quite hard. Well, how did you train yourself to do it? <laughs> Staring at a light bulb for ages. I'm sure yeah. it's very bad for you. Well, the first thing I ever saw you on time I ever saw you on the catwalk. That was that was what was one of the canny thing about you is that you were totally un in control of the of your face. You know? <laughs> I'm sure you There's noticed no... that. Oh, sure, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I you were watching her. I, didn't I scanned the whole thing, you know. But I was, you had this tremendous quality of repose while you were moving. You know. <laughs> what do you think of the waif supermodels? Well, I think it's great because um, you know. It's good that everyone's having a chance that lots of different looks are popular. Because it used to be if you were petite, you know, you couldn't possibly model. And now there's a lot of very petite girls. There's a lot of big, voluptuous girls. You know, a wide variety of beauty, which is what the public is like. They're all very different. So I think it's nice that uh, they're more open-minded to different looks now. Yeah, I, I envied uh, Jack Nicholson a lot in Batman. I didn't really envy him the $9 million he earned for doing the movie. <laughs> I am in it because he had these scenes with you, and, uh, and you were gorgeous in it. And he's got this, he's got this amazing pair of eyes, don't you think? Mm, yeah. Yes, he was great to work with. What? And he gave me some good tips, you know, how to, how to keep the camera on you longer. So he said, you know, when the camera's on you and you have to look at someone, they can't cut until you turn your face. So it's better to sort of turn your eyes first and then your face. So you get those few seconds longer. Well, I've got to remember that. Will you do that again for me, shall we? Okay. Okay, let me do it to you. Good okay. tip. I look out here and I look like this, but they can't cut until I do this. You got it. Yeah. That's, that, that, someone should have told me that years ago. It means you can hog the camera as long as you like, right? Yep, that's yeah, how you else, get to be a else? big Hollywood star. You brought out a yoga-sizing video. Do you think yoga-sizing could do anything for me? I'm not sure. You, you, you yeah, yeah, I could show you. I could show you something. Show me, show me something. Yeah. Well, there's this, there's this, there's this. You could do this. Could yeah, you? just yeah. I'm not, that... <laughs> Wait a sec. Yeah. That's as far as it goes. Yeah. <laughs> no, wait a sec. Yeah, That's as far. <laughs> You mm. see the problem, mm. yeah. Right? Mm. yeah. A little bit of stretching, just we, a little bit of stretching needed. Could we just cause, concentrate on the breathing? Because breathing yeah, is very that's important very to easy. you. Mm. There's all sorts of simple breathing techniques, you know, where you, where you uh, connect your male to your female side. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, <laughs> your male that's what I'm doing now, eh? Do you think I've got a female side that I could explore? Yeah, the, the Antipodean side. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like it's I'm working not sure already. about exploring it, though. You ever had a, a yen to follow in Linda McCartney's footsteps and, and, uh, and join Mick on stage? Well, yes. I mean, uh, Mick's got an album. The Rolling Stones have an album coming out this July with yeah. lots of fabulous love songs about me and things. Yeah. But they're going to be touring starting in August. And... Um, I'm going to be there, you know, waiting on the side for my opportunity to rush on. Um, unfortunately, I can't sing or dance, so... Well, there, 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 is, there, are women in, there are women who are married to rock and roll stars who can't do those things, and they show up on stage. I, so, <laughs> I, uh, Mick, Mick is uh, he's, he's terrifically impressive in many ways. One of them is this incredible flat stomach he's got, which is, you know... Is the toughest thing for men uh, of my age group, which is his age group. That's the hardest thing to talk about. I think he might it. argue he, with you there. <laughs> well, he is in terrific shape. He, he does a lot of jumping around, yeah. doesn't he? He's, uh, he does. Does he yoga size? He's very physically active. Does he does the does he do the yoga? <laughs> hmm? No, no. What does he do? Uh, weights. And... Not telling you his. We're not telling you his secrets. <laughs> well, you think I'm going to steal his secrets and go on and start singing honky tonk woman? <laughs> Oh dear, honky tonk woman, I can do it. <laughs> I watched him sing it one night in Prague, you know, and I saw, uh, I saw a hundred thousand people, Czechoslovakians, who hadn't hadn't heard that song since '68, you know, since the crackdown, and they'd aged a whole generation, and there they were swinging along with it, and that reminded me over again, all over again, what a great rock and roll band is all about. It was. Mm. 
it was terrific. But enough of that. Yeah. It could have been me, it's just I lacked, well, I lacked the talent. Uh, <laughs> Jerry, I could talk to you like this forever, but I can think of a few people who wouldn't let me. I have to say thank you very much, Jerry Hall.